Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Don Johnson. And I'm Terry Briggs. Here's what's happening in your city. One cut. A national furniture and home decorating company is now doing business in Grand Prairie. Restoration Hardware is located in a new $22 million warehouse at Arkansas Lane and State Highway 161. The 850,000 square foot facility is designed as a distribution hub for the company's southwest region. 300 new employees have been hired to run the shipping and receiving center. The new business is expected to generate millions of dollars in revenue from property taxes and sales tax. And Restoration Hardware could attract more development along the 161 corridor. This location is phenomenal. We hope this brings some synergy to this location. We love having 800,000 square feet, but what we want is sales tax generators up and down 161 all the way down to I-20. We think this will help us. Officials say the California-based retailer considered several other sites in North Texas, but chose Grand Prairie because of its friendly personality and can-do attitude. And, you know, I've gone back and reflected on the reasons why I was drawn to this location. And it was really the sense of community that was here that I just, you know, nobody even talked to me. I didn't get to meet anybody or anything like that. It was just Forrest and I. But, but I had an immediate sense of, of community here. In addition to warehouses, Restoration Hardware operates more than 100 retail stores across the country, including several in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I need a raffle ticket. Somebody bring me a raffle ticket. Come on up here. On a hop, on a hop, on a hop. Halloween turns out to be the perfect way to scare up donations for one Grand Prairie charity. The Little Lunch of Horrors is a holiday tradition featuring celebrity servers in costumes. The event is the major fundraiser of the year for Children First, an agency dedicated to helping the victims of abuse or neglect. This is a very significant part of our budget. Uh, it's, it's equivalent to many of our uh, government grants. And so uh, if we don't do well with this, uh, you know, that, that just means we have to go out and find the money somewhere else. And as you know, that's not easy these days. You can get more information about Children First by going online at childrenfirstinc.org or calling 972-264-0604. Grand Prairie's Parks and Recreation Department kicked off the Halloween season by hosting a new event called Trick or Trail along the Bowles Park Trail next to the Tony Shotwell Life Center. Several vendors from around the city set up stations along the trail and invited kids and adults to travel from station to station and rewarded them with all kinds of treats. Thank you. Representatives from the city's police and fire departments were also on hand for the traditional trunk or treat event as they too handed out candy to kids, many of whom were wearing their Halloween costumes. Say hi. Hi. How are you? I love your outfit. There we go. There was a lot of fun going on inside too as the Shotwell Life Center hosted a Halloween carnival complete with a haunted house. The event was a huge success, drawing hundreds of families. What do you think about this? This is something new for them. Right? It's very nice. I love it. I'm so glad. It's so good to have something free and something fun to do. We love it. Absolutely. Great idea. Wonderful. There are several more Halloween events planned throughout the city in the next week. To find out all the information, you can go to the city's website at gptx.org. Grand Prairie voters will go to the polls on November 5th to fill vacancies on the City Council and decide a sales tax referendum. On the City Council ballot, three candidates have filed for the vacancy in District 3, Bill Nash, Lila Thorne, and Kurt Johnson. Four candidates have filed for the vacancy in District 7 at large, Charlie Warmack, Jeff Copeland, R.J. Delena, and Max Coleman. The council election is necessary because Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Ruthie Jackson, who represented District 7, and Bill Thorne, who represented District 3, both died in August. The ballot also includes a referendum on the use of the sales tax revenue collected for the Crime Control and Prevention District. In 2012, voters overwhelmingly reapproved a 10-year extension of the one-quarter cent sales tax being collected by the district. The tax revenue is being used to pay off the construction debt on the public safety building. However, more revenue is being collected than needed for the debt. 
So district officials are asking voters to approve using the excess funds to hire and equip more police officers. Early voting for the special election begins October 21st and continues through November 1st. The polls will be open on November 5th from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. For more information, go to the city's website at gptx.org slash elections. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you can join us next time.